let's start. Thank you very much, my PR man. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I date back to City College graduation 1951. Anybody here who was born by then? <laughs> this is my alma mater, and that's what gives me such great satisfaction to come back here year after year and speak in Professor Middleman's class. Let me start by telling you that um, I am very impressed by the fact that you have enrolled in this class because the Holocaust is a very difficult subject to learn about and to talk about. But I'm going to do it not to give you more facts and figures because I understand you are well educated in the history of the Holocaust. What I'm going to try to do this morning in the hour or so that I have is to try to give you a feeling as to how it was for one person to live through one aspect of the Holocaust. I'm going to tell you my story. And my story is nowhere near as difficult or terrible as many other survivors. I was not in a camp. I did not experience some of the horrors that others did. But I was a youngster. I was 10 years old when it started, and I lived through years and years of it. And I think if you put yourself into my shoes as I tell my story, picture yourself experiencing the things that I'm talking about as if it were happening to you. And think how you would feel about yourself and about people. And think, try to imagine how your parents would feel if they had to make the kind of decisions my parents had to make. I'm going to try and keep about a half hour or so at the end for questions and answers. So feel free to store up any questions that you might have for that time. I was born in a very, very small village in Bavaria, in southern Germany, a village called Kronheim. When I say small, I mean 500 inhabitants. And that counts chicken and cows and horses. It was tiny. And for centuries, Jews, Catholics, and Protestants lived together in that village in very reasonable harmony. One of my earliest memories is of my dad, who was the president of the small Jewish congregation. My dad was the guest of honor in the Catholic Church for midnight mass on Christmas Eve. And the Catholic priest was the guest of honor in our small synagogue for Kolnidre services, the holiest moment in the Jewish calendar. That's the kind of mutual respect we had for each other. Comes 1933, Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party come to power in Germany for many, many reasons which I won't go into now. And he came into power despite the fact that in actual electioneering he made it very clear that if he and his Nazi party came to power, he would be very tough on Jews and on all minorities, but especially on Jews. He hated Jews. When he wrote his book, Mein Kampf, it was full of diatribe about horrors, about Jews and all minorities but his fixation was on Jews. And despite that, Hitler became <coughs> Chancellor of Germany, and within days or weeks, he transformed Germany from a democracy into a total dictatorship. He did away with all democratic institutions. The Reichstag, which is the German parliament, 
became a rubber stamp and it was totally controlled by him and his party. And within months, he seized control of all of Germany's governmental functions. He was the executive, the legislative, and the judicial branch, all rolled into one. And he eliminated all opposition, either by making them afraid to speak up or to do anything, or by arresting them and putting them away in concentration camps. Within two years, <coughs> the Nazis enacted the Nuremberg Laws, which took away all civil rights of Jews. Those Nuremberg Laws were enforced mainly in the cities. In Kronheim, in our little village, people could care less about politics. They were more interested in how much they could get for their chickens and how much was the fodder for the cows, that sort of thing. We continue to live in reasonable harmony. Politics were ignored, which in a way was good for us at the time. On the other hand, it failed to raise the signal of what was to happen. Living along in a normal way, I went to school. When I say school, I mean it was one classroom with one teacher for all grades. One little classroom. I have no idea how we learned anything. <laughs> I mean, they didn't want to make any Einsteins there. They just wanted to make farmers and maybe a shopkeeper. That's all. So one morning I was getting ready to go to school with my sister and a couple of other Jewish kids. We went to school, and as we walked up and tried to enter the classroom, we saw the non-Jewish kids all bunched together didn't think anything about it. We went to the classroom door and then suddenly the non-Jewish kids pounced on us, Jewish kids. I mean physically jumped on us, beat us, spit on us, called us dirty names, kicked us. I, I, I was completely in shock. I didn't, these were my classmates, my playmates. Never had a bad word with them, ever. And there I was on the floor being kicked, and I was looking for the teacher to appeal to him. And then I found it was the teacher who was telling the kids what to do. He instigated the whole thing. I couldn't believe that. I, I worshipped that teacher. I picked myself up off the floor, went into the classroom, sat at my pre-assigned desk, and there I found a pamphlet. And the Every other desk had the same pamphlet. And when I looked at it, it was full of anti-Semitic slogans. The Jews are the cause of all of Germany's problems. Go out and burn their houses. Kill all the Jews. And the teacher made all of us rehearse, <coughs> chanting those slogans over and over and over, and then made us all go out into the main street of the village and chant those slogans to the villagers, including us Jewish kids. Well, you say, why didn't you just refuse to do it? Well, in Germany in those days, if the teacher told you to jump, you jumped. You didn't dare not obey a teacher or even question what a teacher told you. That was the German culture at the time. Can you imagine what it is for you to chant out to other people, kill all the Jews, when you were Jewish yourself? I'm 10 years old. 